it was a very slow drive up a very steep hill and I think I'm still climbing up there um, because I didn't figure it out that I wanted to be an actor until I was a senior in high school. And that was really just through doing a bunch of other things and not liking them very much. Like being in track and being a gymnast and, and, and I just, all of it had to do with being in shorts and working out and I just didn't like any of that. And, and then I was a cheerleader and because I was a cheerleader, they were doing Grease at my high school and I thought, ooh, I'm going to go audition to be the cheerleader. And once I did that, I, it all kind of made sense. And then I thought, oh, this is, this is what I like doing. I like entertaining people. I like making people laugh. I, at that time, I didn't know that I'd be able to make people cry. Uh, but I just liked um, that I could entertain people and make them like not think about you know, their lives and themselves for however amount of time. Um, and that's just kind of where it started, was there. I didn't go to college okay. because I did not get into the college that I felt was good enough for the acting program. I ended up going to like a fame school. I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in Pasadena, uh, right out of high school. Okay, I just found my old headshots look at these oops same one what is happening oh my god insane i had very random jobs like i was a barista um inside a liquor store in newport beach when i was in high school which is crazy, like that I was like eight, 17 years old working in a liquor store, but because I was the, in the coffee doing the barista work, um, I guess it didn't matter. But as far as like older adult odd jobs, um, I was a benefit coordinator and I got the job because I went to go volunteer to be a celebrity um, escort, not that kind of escort, um, <laughs> not that kind of escort. Uh, like when celebrities go to big events, like award shows, and you are given, um, you know, let's just say I had Meryl Streep. So I would be in charge of taking Meryl Streep and uh, showing her where her table was and going and getting her to bring her backstage to give the award. And you were kind of responsible for keeping an eye on them throughout the evening. So I did that for um, a company called the American Cinematheque, which is still around today. And I befriended the woman who kind of coordinated the entire event. And I had asked her if I could just come and work with her. And she said, well, I don't have any money to pay you, but you can come and I'll pay you in tickets. And so the first job I did with her, she gave me two tickets to this huge charity event with The Who performing Tommy. And the tickets were like $1,500 tickets or something ridiculous. And I got to go and I really was like, ooh, this is like a fun way to see behind the scenes and do really good work. So then I ended up working for her and I worked for her for gosh, maybe like three or four years. We ended up being like partners in the company. It was just her and I, and it was really a fascinating view inside the business. Nobody knew I was an actor. Everybody just thought that this is what I did. And then I started working as an actor and then I quit that job. So that was actually my one job I had uh, being out of high school before then I started working as an actor. Halloween episode of Boston, Boston Legal. Legal. Spader and Shatner. <laughs> oh Lord. Yeah, that was me and stuff. Oh, and look, good morning Miami. Oh. Crazy, I'm one of the lucky ones. I, I didn't have to do hard, hard labor. Um, even though I had some celebrities that made me cry. So that was, that was hard. <laughs> It's emotionally hard. It's emotionally hard. 
And it's the first piece of furniture I bought. And it was just funny because I was living alone at the time and I had bought a house by myself. I had been divorced. I had gotten my first big job as a series regular on Good Morning Miami. And, my, and it was the creators of Will and Grace. Right. So I was working with these people and we were right next door. Our stages were right next to Will and Grace's stages. So we all became friends and it was like a very surreal, like for that to be my first series regular job. And my whole life turned around. I, I went from not being able to pay my rent and being kicked out of my apartment to getting on Good Morning Miami and then buying a house on my own and having to furnish it. And I got so much furniture from my friends. The one thing I needed was a dining room table and I bought this massive, and it was from like the 18th century. And by the way, that was when I was 30 and I just sold that table three years ago. I was sad to let it go because of the memory of it, but you know what? Sometimes you just gotta let shit go. First love, I would probably say, uh, if you looked at my journals from when I was a little girl, <laughs> I think my first love was actually when I was in fourth grade. Now, I don't know if that's the kind of love you're talking about, <laughs> or if you want it to be a little bit more realistic, but when I think of like the first time I just thought this boy was the be all and end all of my entire world and universe. I was in fourth grade and he's who I had my first kiss with. Yes. My first kiss was in fourth grade. Um, in a, in a camper shell in a driveway. So I'm classy. <laughs> and by the way, it was playing spin the bottle. Still, I can't. When I retell that story, I'm just like, what was I, what? I mean, fourth grade, like that was crazy. I still have a picture of him and I had taken a, um, like a pin, a safety pin, and I had carved a heart in the photo. You remember when we did that? I mean, I'm much older than you, but back in the day, you used to take <laughs> pins. <laughs> <laughs> and you used to carve into the picture. <laughs> like, I feel like the biggest heartbreak would have had to have been in high school. I mean, it's so interesting you're asking these questions because I've been going through all of these old bins that have all my old journals in them. And I've been writing journals since I was in sixth grade, I believe. And I mean, the love that I had for some of those boys is so intense. And reading it back, it just all floods back. And I'm like, I totally forgot about that guy. And yet here I was like pages and pages of this guy and like everything, the way his hair was and his eyes and what he wore. I mean, it's so insane. So I'm, that's why I feel like my heartbreak should have been something in high school. But hold on, because I'm one of those people that I bounce back very quickly. Um, and I don't know that that's. I don't know that that's a good thing, honestly. I, I actually don't know because it kind of doesn't force you to be in the moment and experience the pain and the suffering. And instead you just go and you focus right back into somebody else. Um, but let's see. It was heartbreaking that that relationship didn't work out, but I don't know that it was my biggest heartbreak in my life because I think that looking back on it, I saw it coming a little bit. And because I was the one to walk away, it makes it not as heartbreaking as, you know, someone that's like, bye, I don't like you anymore. You're just not, it's not you, it's me, you know, all that 
bullshit. Uh, or maybe it's true. I don't know. I, it's weird that I'm like, can't even pinpoint one. Like that's terrifying. It means I either had way too many or I've just blacked them all out. You know what? I think my first biggest heartbreak would be when I was a uh, freshman in high school. So that was ninth grade. And I was dating a older boy in my high school. He was like captain of the football team. And I think that I truly believed that he loved me and that we were going to be together forever. And that was not the case. And I think that really broke my heart because I think, again, I look back and I read my journals uh, that could have been a situation where he was pretending that that was the deal, but that wasn't really true, um, you know, to maybe get me to do things that I wouldn't have done if I didn't think he was in love with me. So, but, and maybe that was, I think, such a big lesson for me because I thought, oh my God, he loves me. This is it. This is forever. And then just one day just was like, no, we're not going to date anymore. And that was it. Russ and I were set up through a mutual friend. Uh, the friend was working with Russ in San Francisco. This same friend, I, was living in her house in Los Angeles because I had just gotten divorced. And we were in, my sister and I, who were both divorced at the same time, moved into her house because she moved to San Francisco for this job. She called me one day and she said, I found your next husband. And I said, relax, I'm in your house because I just got a divorce. I'm not interested in another husband. For six years, she tried to get us together. Uh, he's in, he's coming into town. He's coming to LA. Um, you should meet him or, and I had a boyfriend or he had a girlfriend and it just never worked. It never worked until my 35th birthday. And she said, okay, this is my last try. Can I just bring him to your birthday party? You'll be distracted by your other friends. And you guys are either going to like each other or you're not. But I just, I can't do it anymore. I just need you guys to meet. And I said, fine, whatever. I don't care. And he came. I'll never forget. She came running up to me and she said, oh my God, oh my God. He's here, but he looks nothing like what I remember he looks like. He's got, I mean, he's got a mustache and his hair's really long. And that is not that is not the guy that I remember from a couple years ago. Uh, Cause he had moved to New York in the meantime and they had lost touch and all those things. Anyways. Uh, and I said, whatever, don't worry about it. It's fine. And I met him that night and he ended up staying late at the party and we talked by the fire uh, all night long and he left. And I just thought, uh, wow. That, that guy's really, is that the guy? Like I, I kind of right away started having those questions. It took him six months to call me. He has a good excuse. Um, he had a girlfriend and he had been traveling back and forth from South Africa to New York. And he did like four trips to South Africa from New York in like two months. He wanted to break up with this girlfriend before he called me to chat again. And, but he was never in town. So when he told me the story, I was like, oh, okay, all right. I mean, you're, that's, that's a good guy. You're a good guy. I appreciate that. And so when he did, he called me and then we had dinner and then that's it. The rest is history. And now it'll be 15 years we've been together next year. I mean, I met him 15 years ago, but we didn't start dating until, you know, like the next year um, after that six-month fiasco. <laughs>